Welcome to this edition of the Rotary Reporter. I'm Diana Lazowski and I will be your host for this segment. The postmortem phase of the 2020 election here in Rhode Island is in full swing. Analysts claim to find answers in the data. Prognosticators are offering insights about future contests. Hey, gypsies are reading about 2020 in their tea leaves. So here goes your trend-following Rotary Reporter with two more cents worth of commentary on the sea change we saw last month. Channel 12 reporter Ted Nisi took a look at Nick Mattiello's recent campaign finance filing and noticed he'd spent over $300,000 on his failed election effort. That prompted Ted to check out the victor in that House District 15 race. Representative-elect Barbara Ann Fenton Fung spent four times less money on the way to her win. Nisi left the question open, but Barbara Ann was succinct in her public statement on the matter, and I quote, because we simply outworked them, she said. In fact, the Fenton Fung campaign was on the doorsteps of the district every night, weekend, and holiday of every month between June and November. The candidate herself hit every door in the district at least once. She and her volunteers also showed up at every neighborhood event that was open to the public. So ordinary voters saw and spoke to the challenger if they wanted to. None of that could be said for then Speaker Mattiello. Sure, the 300 grand was spent on his campaign, but how much of that was visible to the voters? Paid staff positions are a luxury afforded to incumbents with that kind of money to spend, but those payouts may not do much at all to improve the candidate's brand equity. Mr. Mattiello may have even been nonchalant in his retail campaigning because he knew a coordinated effort was underway to harvest all those newly accessible mail ballots this cycle. Too bad then that the Speaker was virtually the only Democrat contender not to see their votes total more than double overnight as those mail ballots were counted. So did someone have it out for Mr. Mattiello? At least everyone on that side of the aisle made out during the third shift vote count. In fact, the huge break in mail ballots in the direction of the Dems was an ugly surprise for the GOP that heralded a new set of rules for future elections. Ballot harvesting operations mounted by paid staffers and volunteers identified, contacted, and secured an overwhelming number of votes well before Election Day. It was so much fun for them that you can be sure legislation will be filed to make the option permanent whenever the General Assembly finally meets. Well, here's a Rhodey Reporter question aimed directly at you. Which kind of state legislature campaign would you like to see in 2022? Would you like to meet and take that measure of your candidates in advance? Say when they arrive at your door to ask for your vote? Or would you prefer instead to hear from armies of non-candidate operatives pressuring you to let them have your mail ballot in advance? It's up to you. And frankly, which kind of representative government you get depends heavily on which kind of campaign you choose.